Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game that was played in the Professional Chess Association Intel Grand Prix in Paris in 1995 and it's a rapid tournament. This is the second round of the tournament. Vladimir Kramnik faces Vasily Ivanchuk uh, and uh, well as today is Kramnik's birthday a lot of you have requested a game uh, by Kramnik and I thought this was a fitting one as it features uh, well sort of a present uh, from uh, Vasil and uh, you know I thought it was a good idea since today was his birthday and it's quite a present to to, to get as you'll see uh, in the in the video so without further ado let's check it out it's a pretty uh, standard opening nothing uh, you know crazy happening but it features a very cool twist so here we have knight to f3 uh, Kramnik starts off with a reti opening we have knight f6 c4 and g6 now preparing bishop g7 castles and so on we have knight to c3 uh, d5 striking in the center captures captures and now e4 uh, attacking the knight we have knight captures on c3 b captures Captures bishop to g7 and now uh, finally white plays d4 move and we basically transpose into the main line of the Grunfeld defense uh, asking uh, what do you what do you want to do here uh, so here uh, the standard idea is just keep challenging the center that's how this is played we have c5 challenging the center uh, and also there's the problem of the rook on a1 so uh, Kramnik wants to eliminate this uh, problem right away, so he goes rook to b1. Now black will have to be careful uh, with the development of the light square bishop, otherwise he's going to lose the b7 pawn. So castles and now bishop to e2. Kramnik now ready to castle. We have knight to c6 and now d5. Now uh, challenging this knight, chasing it away uh, into the corner on a5 and... Um, uh, here, bishop captures on c3 is what uh, Vassal played, and it's uh, it was a very, very popular move, but nowadays knight to e5 is um, uh, kind of a safer approach, and people are avoiding bishop captures on c3, uh, because it tends to get very, very complicated, and the lines uh, of attack are very, very clear for white, as you'll see in the game. Uh, but uh, Vassal not want to back down from a challenge, he accepts it, bishop captures on c3 with check, uh, we have bishop to d2, he trades off uh, the dark square bishops, Captures, captures, and now knight to a5. And this is uh, often the destiny of this knight on a5 in the Grunfeld defense. It, it will either remain here for the rest of the game. Uh, sometimes that's good for black. Uh, most often it's not. But uh, if it's able to rejoin uh, the, the other pieces, then black will have a great game. But let's see what happens here. Uh, Kramnik starts now by uh, attacking on the king side. He plays h4. He wants to play h5. Capture here. Open up the h file. Play queen to h6 and checkmate the black king. That's sort of a, uh, you know, the, the dumbed down variation of, of the idea. Uh, black will, of course, try everything to prevent this. Uh, Vassal goes bishop to g4 and now h5. Uh, and now capturing this with the bishop, although possible, uh, isn't recommended. And no, you don't capture the bishop right away. I know that's what you guys want to do. But you play g4 and then black is just lost. Because now you either lose a piece or you capture this and queen h6, you're getting checkmated. So instead, after h5, we have bishop captures on f3, g captures on f3, uh, kind of ruining black's king side, but uh, white's king side, but white doesn't matter. The white king will be uh, very safe on e1 or maybe even on f1 or maybe even on g2. Uh, we'll see what happens. So here, uh, the queen needs a way to help out with the king side. So here we have e5. You don't have to worry about Alpassant uh, because uh, black will definitely enjoy trading queens. Uh, so h captures on g6. Now the queen is ready to join the attack. We have f captures. Now both the rook and the queen will be able to keep an eye on the h7 pawn. Uh, and now uh, d6. And this is all very, very standard stuff. This is nothing new. Uh, even back then, uh, uh, queen d5 check now is coming, and uh, there are a lot of threats here. You would not believe how many threats uh, there are, and I'm just going to show you some of them uh, here. For example, if black isn't careful, let's say black plays something like rook to e8, uh, you immediately uh, can forfeit, because now rook captures on b7, and that's it. So now you can see that there's simply too much going on here. If knight captures on b... If you don't capture, then you simply cannot defend the h7 pawn. This pawn is just a monster here, so you'd have to capture but now queen d5 check and uh, whatever you do simply doesn't matter if king to h8 we're just going to play queen to f7 and there is no defending checkmate if you try something else for example after this check you could try king to f8 uh, but uh, it's still not going to do all that much good bishop c4 and now uh, either queen f7 checkmate or queen here checkmate that the pawn is still covering the e7 square and uh, uh, aside from h8 and uh, f8 you could go to g uh, g7 but now we just pick this up with check 
check and after the king moves we just pick this up and that's it you're either getting checkmated here or here or here uh, you're, you're getting checkmated somewhere so d6 is a deadly move uh, and uh, vassal needs to uh, be careful so you do not want to allow rook captures on b7 vassal prevents this by playing b6 now the knight is welcome to rejoin the game and that's uh, basically what we are always wondering will the a5 knight uh, you know uh, uh, come back uh, we have queen to d5 with check, king to g7, and now queen captures on e5. So li like we've seen, you can't really defend this pawn with any means, otherwise you get that variation that we've just shown. Uh, and now queen to f6, uh, just offering a trade uh, and uh, saying, okay, I, I would very much enjoy trading queens here. But uh, uh, Kramnik goes back, we have queen to h2, now threatening queen captures on h7. And, uh, well, even if you play something like rook to h8, queen coming to h6, check will pose a lot of problems for uh, for black. So here we have h5. Now you don't have to worry about the h7 pawn anymore. Uh, but now how do you continue the attack with white? And this is very important here. Uh, problem is if you try something like e5, and it definitely that does make sense. You have two connected pass pawns. Problem is queen f5 attacks the rook. And now uh, after, for example, rook to d1, knight c6 comes back into the game. This knight is coming to d4 will block the pass pawn uh, or rather rook's defense of the pass pawn and then when the knight comes here you're going to have a lot of pressure uh, on the f3 pawn so here black definitely goes back into the game and it's all because this knight rejoins the game that's how powerful this knight is so here uh, kramnik plays the absolute best rook to d1 uh, there are some uh, ideas where you could try with queen to g3, but rook to d1 is just very straightforward, uh, and you will enjoy this. And now, what do you play here? Uh, well, here, uh, black is actually perfectly fine. Black can continue playing this uh, game uh, in a lot of ways. Just bringing the knight to c6 makes sense. You want to bring the knight to d4, and then you're fine. You don't have to worry about those pawns. Uh, you can block off the, the, the rook's defense of the pawn. Also, you keep an eye on the e5 uh, square, so you don't have to worry about e5, and then you, you will start bringing your other rook into the game and so on uh for example queen g3 can come now yes you're threatening this but now knight comes here and it's a very very uh tricky position uh for example rook captures here you're just gonna play rook to h8 you're, you're perfectly fine here uh however after this rook to d1 move vassal did not play knight to c6 but now we reach the position from the birthday gift that i mentioned uh vassal plays knight to c4 and we reached the position from the thumbnail seems like a free knight it's not a free knight really because queen to c3 check will win back the piece uh, but it poses some uh, other problems. So here, bishop captures on c4 was played. Queen to c3 check by vassal, king f1, queen captures on c4, again winning this pawn uh, piece with check. And now you have to go to g2, you have to defend the pawn with the king. You do not want to allow rook captures here because then your entire position just crumbles. So king g2 and now rook a to d8. And it seems like vassal was able to bring all of his pieces into the game, uh, but there is uh, one problem. Here Kramnik plays queen to e5 with check, we have king to g8, and now uh, we reach the the position where uh, as usual you guys will pause the video and win this game uh, for Kramnik in great style while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding this beautiful, beautiful move. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's Rook to D5. Uh, if you, for some reason, decided to play Queen to G3, this also works. But um, uh, it, it works because, okay, now you attack this pawn. And if we defend it with the Queen, now you're just going to play uh, Rook captures on H5. And then, well, the, the position will just be unplayable. Rook can come to H1. You can play Rook G5, go after this pawn. Uh, a lot of ideas here. And if you don't defend with Queen to e6 if you defend with the king let's say king h7 now you play rook to d5 with the with a very similar idea because now after rook to d5 there's simply no defense against the rook captures here uh whatever you play it doesn't really matter we're just gonna capture here with check captures and this will be checkmate so while queen to g3 is playable uh rook to d uh, rook to d5 is just a bit more straightforward so congratulations if you found either of those two moves uh so here what do you play uh, well, now the queen no longer has access to, to the king side, and will have uh, it will be impossible to be of any assistance to the black king. So here, rook to f7. Now the rook can help out with the defense here, but also you can maybe get your king to f8. 
but now comes rook to h3, now bringing the other rook into the attack here. So rook d to d7, gaining control of the of the seventh rank. Now rook to g3, defending uh, at attacking the g6 pawn. We have rook to g7 by Vassal, and here uh, Vladimir played uh, queen to e6 check, and he was in this position on 29 that Vassal Ivanchuk resigned the game, and a brilliant victory for Vladimir Kramnik in round two uh, of this um, uh, of this Paris Grand Prix Rapid tournament because now it doesn't matter where you go with the king uh, this rook can always move and open up a discovery towards the white queen so if you go h8 or h7 we're just gonna pick up this uh, pawn and after captures we're gonna win the queen and that's it there's no playing this uh, same same could be said of king to f8 if you go king to f8 we can win the queen like this but then we have to give up the rook this is even more straightforward so we don't even have to do this now this is a threat there's no uh, the, the, there is no defense against this so it's uh, re really really pointless uh, so another thing you could do after queen to e6 check you could block check with this rook but here Kramnik would just say okay d7 thank you for my second queen and now you resign there's no move black and play here so really uh, a, a crazy crazy game and it all came down to this moment after Kramnik played rook to d1 where Vassal uh, uh, and uh, it, you know it's basically his signature move uh, Vassal said that you know the hardest move to find is with the knight back and here he went uh, forward with the knight and it simply uh, you know uh, w w was not a good move uh, but he tried it made sense uh, but the position was simply uh, unplayable uh, but it's also a nice uh, nice game to know you know from theoretical point of view because it's a uh, it's just a standard Groomfeld and you can see that all, all, all of these uh, ideas are possible that you can give up the H pawn then you can give up the G pawn as well black has to be very careful about the B7 pawn so B6 has to be played and like we mentioned the knight uh, remained on A5 for the rest of the game and uh, not for the rest of the game but uh, for a very long time and it didn't retreat the C6 but C4 and that's it uh, just uh, ju just uh, you know a crushing win by uh, former world champion Vladimir Kramnik who if you're wondering turned 45 today so uh, there you have it and uh, Kramnik crushed the entire tournament but it was a knockout tournament and then uh, in the finals uh, he uh, was knocked out by Garry Kasparov uh, but yeah, uh, other than that, brilliant tournament and a brilliant victory against Vasily Ivanchuk. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, I, I don't always get a chance, you know, I, I, we, you guys often um, I mentioned that, uh, okay, today is, uh, we have this birthday, this birthday, this birthday, uh, then, uh, you know, uh, uh, this death anniversary, then this, uh, you know, and it, it's uh, really a lot. So I don't manage to cover all of them, uh, but from time to time I will cover them. And now, now was the, uh, well, one such time. So yeah, once again, hope you guys enjoyed it. Congratulations to everyone who found either of the two moves. You are an excellent player. Uh, I would like to thank Alexander Williamson, Derek King, Jorge Campos, uh, David Trainer, and Kevin Stormeyer for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.